I'm Elizabeth at Literary Princess and today I bought more books. I have no excuses. I'm not even gonna try anymore. I am never gonna su successfully put myself on a book buying man. It's just, it is what it is. So I actually bought these last month at the, I think 53rd NEMLA conference in Baltimore. NEMLA is the Northeast Modern Language Association. They were having a conference that I presented at. I have a vlog of that experience, which I will link in the description box below if you would like to see it. So NEMLA is a bunch of academics getting together. So naturally there's going to be books involved and they had what was called the exhibit hall, which featured food, much appreciated, coffee also much appreciated, uh, the undergraduate poster presentations, and then just tables and tables of books from different publishers and people taking orders for them. So naturally, I looked around in there a lot <laughs> and I bought some things. I bought four books and they're gorgeous and simply beautiful. I'm super excited to show them to you. So three of them pertain to my research interests kind of, and then one of them is completely not at all, but that's okay. So let's get going. First up, we have Gothic, an illustrated history by Roger Luckhurst. So this is frigging gorgeous. First of all, look at this cover. I literally was just, it was the first book that I was drawn to when looking at the tables for the exhibits. I was like, ooh. And I mean, it's beautiful. Look at the back. Oh my God. I'm in love with it. Um, so this is obviously a history of Gothic architecture, literature, film, all of that. Um, it has illustrations and photographs. I'm not sure how well they'll come out um, because of the ring light, but I mean, it's freaking gorgeous and definitely kind of creepy <laughs> in some places but oh I love I love it so much so yeah this goes through um so it's got like architecture and form so and the d various architectural structures so, like the house the labyrinth the ruins then the lie of the land nice little pun there <laughs> So the country and the city, the village, the forest, um, the Gothic compass, so north, south, east, west. I'm assuming that's like Southern Gothic and that type of stuff. And then monsters, scale, splice, the tentacle, formless, and us, because of course we are the biggest monsters in any Gothic or horror novel you will ever read or movie you will ever watch. So this is so exciting. I cannot wait to jump into this. The Gothic is one of my um, re research interests. I do a lot with Victorian Gothic. My master's thesis was on the influence of folklore and fairy tales in Victorian Gothic fiction. So I am super excited. This is gonna be great. Next up is Jane Austen, Early and Late by Freya Johnston. So this is actually taking a look at Jane Austen's unpublished works. So she wrote quite a bit before she wrote any of her novels. And it just kind of gets called juvenilia and kind of like we don't really pay attention to it. But there's so much there. So Johnston is exploring that and how it can inform on her published novels and how it says here, like the question it's answering is, can the novels be definitively separated from the unpublished works? In Jane Austen, early and late, Freya Johnston argues that they cannot. So I think this is going to be so interesting and it's going on the pile of books about Jane Austen that I've bought recently that I have not read yet, um, along with Claire Tomlin's biography, Jane Austen, and um, I think it's Lucy Worsley's Jane Austen at Home. 
I love Jane Austen so much, but since she's technically like just outside of my time period, I never get to read any of my stuff on her. Someday, someday Jane. All right, so next up is another one that's like kind of just before my research, my main research interests. This is Born Yesterday, Inexperience and the Early Realist Novel by Stephanie Inslee Hirschenau, I think. I don't know. So this is exploring um, mainly 18th and then some very early 19th century um, realist novels, obviously, and the inexperienced character. So I do a lot of work with realist novels in the Victorian era. So it's very, and it's really important to have some background in the 18th century novel in order to understand the 19th century novel. So this is exploring um, books by Samuel Johnson, like Clarissa, which I have always wanted to read and never have. Um, Tom Jones, I forget who that's actually by. Henry Fielding, thank you, back of the book. Um, Anne Radcliffe's Gothic novels, which I read The Mysteries of Udolpho for a Gothic class, and I really enjoyed it. Again, Gothic, there's my interest. Um, and then Frances Burney, who wrote Evelina, I think it is, which I adored. Um, she's a writer, little bit before Jane Austen, had a big influence on Jane Austen. And then it looks like the epilogue of this deals with um, Jane Austen's Emma. So I think this will be really good. I think it'll be important and useful to me. And it's short, <laughs> which is always nice in a world where our books are not always short. All right, and then the last one is the one that actually has no relation to any of my research interests. This is the original Bambi, the story of life in the forest by Felix Salton. And so it is translated and introduced by Jack Zipes, who is one of the leading fairy tale scholars, which is why I kind of noticed this. Like I saw a deer and was like, oh, cute. And then I saw Jack Zipes and was like, ooh. So, and then it's also illustrated by Alenka Sotler. I think that's how you pronounce that. So this is, Bambi, the story that the um, Disney movie is based off of, which I like always kind of vaguely knew it was based on a book, but I've never read the book and never actually encountered the book, like never seen it anywhere. You just kind of think of the Disney movie. So when I saw this, I was like, oh, it's really pretty. And Jack Zipes is introducing it. So that's bound to be good. And then, I mean, look, God, look at the cover, look at the illustrations here. I'll find a few more. Find a good one with a cute deer. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> deer. <laughs> like, isn't that lovely? So I don't know. I was just like, you know, it wasn't that expensive because at Nemla they give you a discount. So it was like half price. <laughs> and I was like, I kind of want to read the original Bambi. And then also, I don't know, to have it in my library for if I ever have kids, that would be fun to read to them. Is it actually considered a children's book? I don't know. Oh, he's an Austrian Jewish writer. Interesting. Published in 1923. It's more somber than the adaptations that followed it. Maybe this is not a children's book. <laughs> I don't know, but I have time to read it and find out. Or I will have time to read it and find out, you know, if I ever finish this PhD and all my reading involved for that. So those are the books that I bought at NEMLA. Let me know down in the comments if any of those sound good to you, if you've heard of them, if you've read them, what books have you bought recently? It's been great chatting with you. I will see you soon. Bye.